Welcome to Event Icons, where every week you get to chat with the icons of the event industry. I'm Lindsay, and joining me today are my favorite pal, Alex, and our lovely guest, Fiona. And we're going to talk about how the events industry can solve global issues. Let's get to it. It's Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern, so you know what that means. It's time for another episode of Hashtag Event Icons, presented by Endless Events. The show where you get to ask the icons of the events industry anything. Just go to www.event-icons.com to ask questions. Our iconic guests will answer them live during the entire show. Before we get started, the more people we have watching, the better the conversation. So please help share hashtag event icons on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Just tell your friends to watch at www.event-icons.com. Now, without any further delay, this is Hashtag Event Icons. So joining us today is Fiona Pelham, and we are thrilled to death. We got to talk to her for just a little bit when we were at IMEX Frankfurt. If you aren't familiar with Fiona, she has this amazing background from grassroots efforts needed to get a foothold in the industry. She's been really making a career out of taking these concerns that people around the world have around sustainability and been propelled onto some of the biggest stages around meetings and events and just the UN. I mean, gosh, where isn't she doing? Since 2005, she's been running a nonprofit called called Positive Impact to provide education to support an earth-friendly events industry. And we're just excited to have you and talk a little bit about these big ideas and concerns. So welcome. Wonderful. Thank you. I'm looking forward to getting really in depth on some of these uh, challenges and really the opportunity that the event industry has to solve global issues. So I'm looking forward to you and Alex really picking my brains and translating some of my sustainability speak into something that's relevant for all event professionals. Yeah, um, I'm personally very excited about this. You know, I had the opportunity to interview you at IMAX and those interviews are great, but it's just the, the tip of the iceberg. So yeah. we're really excited to do a deep dive into this topic. Uh, I've known Fiona for a long time, um, but for those who don't know Fiona, uh, one of the things that we ask all of our first-time guests on the show uh, is what got you into the industry, and if you weren't in the industry, what would you be doing? Okay, so what got me into the industry? For years, I was a Girl Scout leader, and I loved the kind of organizing of people. I've always been the natural organizer, the person that did the parties for friends and, and all of that lot. Um, if I wasn't doing what I'm doing now, I'd be doing what my first job was, which was working in retail. And I worked in the marketing department for um, a massive store, Marks and Spencers in the UK. And I love that as well, because shopping for me is another experience that brings people together and gives them a connection and something to talk about. Uh, but my real love is obviously events. And I, I really believe that a difference can be made when people are face-to-face -face connecting. I love that. I think this is the first like time we've heard shopping as... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I feel like a lot of us want to say that, but maybe we aren't. So I appreciate your honesty. <laughs> Rely on me to be honest. Yeah. Well, it's funny because I think of shopping as like, yes, it brings me joy, but it also brings my wallet so much pain. <laughs> but what I tell you what's really interesting. So as part of my first job, I had a placement in store. So you arrive in the shop before the shop opens and you have to make sure it looks inviting and everything is laid out. That's like the start of an event. That's like getting ready for an event. And then the doors open to the shop and people are coming in and you've got the greeting, you've got the goals for the day of how much you want to sell. And it really does kind of work a bit like an event. I would say events are probably more high Adrenaline, adrenaline than the average day in the shop. But. Depends who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like those goop pop-up activations and coming in. And I think that that's actually thinking of retail and then coming back and talking about sustainability. You know, the, the retail activations where you're like, we're only going to do this for a short amount of time. Before we came on the air, you were talking a little bit about, you know, how the events industry is maybe one, one bad headline away from... Yeah 
you know, are, are we being sustainable in that? And what is really sustainability? So maybe we start there and kind of level mm -hmm. set for our listeners who maybe aren't as familiar with the topic. What does sustainability mean to you? And mm -hmm. how is that really affecting the industry on a global level? And interestingly, we'll come back to retail because they are making shifts that the event industry can copy and learn from. So what sustainability really means is having a balanced approach towards our environment, our community, the people that we live with in the world, and towards business. And for a long time, sustainability has been this academic term which can confuse a lot of people. Then at the end of 2016, the United Nations set the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. And they are really a roadmap for how the world will work for everybody. And the goal is that we'll reach those goals by 2030. Those goals have targets. And the aim is that businesses will measure them and governments will measure them and work towards them. And we're really seeing global business arrange their strategies around these sustainable development goals. So let me tell you a bit about what some of the goals are. There's a goal on zero hunger. In other words, everybody in the world having access to food they need, it being nutritious food. There's a goal on gender equality and addressing other inequalities. There is a goal on peace within the world and partnerships, working in partnership. There is a goal on responsible consumption and production and addressing climate change. So you can see it's not just an environmental conversation. It's about how we live on this planet together as human beings. That's what these goals represent. And to me, these goals are a real savior because the sustainability conversation was getting hard and difficult to follow. And some people were saying, is it just environmental? What's the most important? These goals are bringing it to life. And and the event industry now has a chance to get involved with these goals. So I think it's important to frame this discussion. Um, and so that, you know, we, we shared your bio a little bit, um, but if you could share a bit about your background and why the sustainability piece is so important to you, like why do you do what you do? Why have you chosen to focus on this? <clears throat> That's a really great question I like I said I was a Girl Scout leader so I saw the value of people coming together and then I also got to spend some time in Austin Texas early 2000 and I took a number of courses on things like composting and that really turned a light bulb on for me around ah imagine if we lived in a world where every time you had a bit of rubbish you could just put it outside in the ground and it would compost and it would be good for the ground so taking those two things together, I uh, was working in retail and uh, did a great personal development course where I realized if I want to live the life I want to live, I should just get an action now. And I set up my own business, my own event management business. And I thought it was kind of obvious that the business should be about looking after the environment and communities as well. So planning an event in a way that was good for the environment and communities. I really naively thought there would be lots of event organizations working like that. And I'm glad I was that naive because I just went forward into the industry and I would go to the hotels and say, can you measure the waste? Can you make sure you're giving me crockery rather than plastics? This was around 2004 or five. And really interestingly, as I got clients very quickly, because at that time there was a lot of focus on, making sure your event was good for the environment. So I found clients, no problem, but then the supply chain was struggling to deliver what I needed. And that's where Positive Impact came from. It was set up to educate and engage and collaborate and um, give the event industry a way to learn how to be sustainable. Um, sometimes we're a bit of a critical friend, sometimes we're a bit of a disruptor to the industry. Um, but really, we're, we're just a small community having a big impact with the vision of creating a sustainable event industry. So that was how I got started. And that's really, yeah, why I do what I do. I guess, I guess also it's kind of like my, my stubbornness and my... Uh, <laughs> 
my um, wanting to make a difference in the world that keeps me going on this path, even when for the last however many years people have said, what is this stuff that you're doing? Um, and again, bring it back to the sustainable development goals when they were launched in 2016. It was a real oh, take a deep breath moment for me because I could see what I'd been working on now aligned with government strategy and global business strategy. So it was no longer this niche thing. It's now a case of, hey, the big businesses like Unilever, Coca-Cola, Cisco, IBM, they're all aligning to these goals. So this thing I've been talking about for a while, it now has evidence of being business sense too. Is it an uphill battle? I mean, is have you found that it's been challenging getting the support from other people? I mean, for me, it seems like such a no-brainer. You know, we, we produce so many live events and things face-to-face, -face, and you just think about the waste that's produced and the paper. I mean, my God, every time I go to an event and they hand me a piece of paper, I'm like, why? Like, just... This is so unnecessary. We all have a computer in our pocket. And, um, you know, so I, I, you would think that so many people would be on board and, and ready to help. Mm. But, um, you know, is that well, the case? Lindsay, Lindsay just said before, you know, we're one headline away from uh, being recognized yeah. as a very problematic industry. Uh, did you want to say more about that, Lindsay? Well, I was going to say it was just what we were talking about earlier, where, you know, to us, especially reading the think pieces and saying we're one bad headline away, but I was literally sitting on a conference call with a client earlier today and it was for a trade show in Houston and the whole theme for their big 100 by 100 booth space was eco-friendly and sustainability. And then they were talking about moving this huge gigantic forklift from Germany to Houston for the show. And when you think about all the things that it would take to do that, you know, we go, but is the paper the problem or is it the mindset <laughs> of what needs to happen? I mean, because it's that to me, it was like, oh, and it's not just one one trade show booth like that. It's a whole floor and the industry as a whole. I just don't know that we're all on the same page as to how to work together. <laughs> yeah, there's a and there's a few things I, I could say around this. First of all, it's looking at how our industry is set up and um we're set up we're often paid by commissions and we're very time poor as an industry. So the way we run right now doesn't really work with sustainability. Being sustainable, meeting the sustainable development goals is going to require us to be much more strategic. So it's going to require the average event professional to say, what materials am I using? What's going to happen to those materials afterwards? What is the content of my, let's say, exhibition booth. Like, what are, are people learning from that? Who am I employing? What are the human rights considerations around that? So I think the first challenge that we find is as an industry, we're, we're not structured in a way that, that gives us a chance to be as strategic as we could. I think then going back to Alex's point in terms of our people supportive, most, the majority of people say, yes, we should do this. It's the right thing to do, definitely tweak something like a bit of paper as Alex said and then just can't help but going back into the same routine now we could be really generous and say that's because the supply chain we have and, and their supply chain and their supply chain isn't set up to be sustainable but the demand has to start somewhere and I'm often in this conversation within our industry where the industry saying you know what our clients aren't asking for it and I think this is a really key point I want to make. Let's say our major clients are the biggest businesses in the world. So the FTSE 250, 500 companies. Well, they are all now reporting on their sustainability. They're all reporting on the sustainable development goals. If you browse through their sustainability reports, none of them mention events. So as an example, um, Coca-Cola, how much sponsorship money do they spend on events around the world, whether it's the Olympics or how many conferences? Uh, Alex, I know you were just at um, an experiential event at the Coca-Cola headquarters. Oh. 
So they have all of that and they're very engaged with events, but they're not reporting in their sustainability report on the impact, negative or positive, from their events. Well, it's funny you bring that up because like one of the experiences, and I was actually about to ask about how the experience economy and how the shift in, uh, especially with millennials and, and Gen Z to these experiences instead of producing objects and things like that, but to actually experience something, um, how that's affecting sustainability. But since you brought up Coca-Cola, yeah, I was just at the World of Coca-Cola in Atlanta this past weekend, and they have a space there where you can taste, you know, 80 different flavors of Coke products from all around the world. And that's great, and it was delicious and it was awesome, but also every single station had these plastic cups. And I don't remember seeing anything about recycling. I'm sure they do recycle them, but I didn't see anything promoting the recycling of these. But you saw, I mean, there were some people that every single soda they tried, they would get a new cup because they didn't want to mix the flavors. Um, or every station, you know, they had them by country. Every station, they'd get a new cup. And these, these trash cans were just filled. I mean, you've got thousands and thousands of people coming through there every day, just filled the plastic mm. cups that people use for two seconds. And I was just like, yeah. wow. And let me tell you a, a lovely story about that um, challenge that you've just mentioned there. On Global Meeting Industry Day, I did a webinar with four children under the age of 13. And one of them was from Hong Kong. I think he was about eight years old. Um, and he was talking about a school exhibition where his team all brought compostable cups. And he was saying in his eight-year-old way that if he went to an event where they tried to give him plastic wrapped sandwiches, he wouldn't eat it and he'd come back the next day with his own lunchbox. And I think one of the things that we're doing as an industry is we're sticking with the status quo. We're saying it's always been this way. We're not thinking about what the future event attendees might need or we're not thinking enough about the brand reputation of those big businesses. So every time uh, there is a Coca-Cola activation at the Olympics, I'm picking on Coke, so I, I should change my <laughs> example now, or a, a Cisco activation or a BMW or, or whatever, their brand matters. And so many of their brands are aligning behind sustainability because they know that's what the future shopper wants to see. Um, so as an industry, we can't be waiting for them to say it has to be sustainable. We have to be realizing that is now a hygiene factor and we have to be delivering it. And in reality, we're not, we're far from delivering that. So in an ideal world then, I mean, I know you mentioned the, the survey that's going out, but is the survey going to help us set that, those standards so we know what the litmus test is for success or is it more of a guidelines and recommendations they're going to pass down? Um, this survey, I'll talk you through what the survey looks like, and then I'll come back to your point on standards, because that's a, a word with a lot around it that I want to, yeah. to talk a little bit about. So uh, the survey has been modeled on the UN Sustainable Development Goal Action Campaign Survey. They started off making one survey for every human being in the world to complete. And it was saying, choose the sustainable development goals that you think are the most appropriate <laughs> to you. So the survey that is launched now um, that you can access through the Positive Impact website starts off by saying, as an event professional, what are the six sustainable development goals that you think are the most important to your career? And then it asks you over the last 12 months, how do you feel the progress has been around these goals? And you can choose a little smiley face if it's got better, a sad face if it's got worse, or a neutral face if it stayed the same. And then it asks you to commit to actions. And for each goal, there are two actions. And we've taken these actions from industry best practice, from science data, from work that we've done with UN Environment and other UN um, departments. And we've given two examples of action for each goals that could be taken. And we've asked people how long they can pledge to take them. So a month, six months, forever. And we've also given them the chance to say, I'd like to do it, but I don't know how. And then finally, we've given them a chance to add their own action in. So if it doesn't give you the action that you're doing, you can add your own in. So this survey data is going to be seen by the UN, which to me is so important because straight away the survey is raising the profile of this 
event industry, of our event industry. Um, so yes, by the 1st of September, we will be taking the data. We'll be looking at which sustainable development goals are the most important for people, how they think the progress is going, which actions are people committing to, which actions are people saying they want to do and they don't have the ability. And we'll be using that to create a acceleration action, an acceleration commitment that we'll give to the UN, which will say, the event industry is engaging in the sustainable development goals and is committing to these actions. Um, and what questions have you got around all of that process before I talk a bit more about the standards? Because it's a, a bit of a unique process for the industry. Yeah, I mean, we talk about this idea of the events industry solving these global challenges, but, you know, what exactly is it just taking the survey? Like, what does that look like? Mm. So and the is it survey the individual action, or is it like the associations inside the events industry? Is it the companies that we work for? Wh who, mm -hmm. and how is that breaking down? The survey is for any event professional to talk about their day-to-day -day life, whether they're in the office working on that part of an event or they're on site. So it's okay. the the life experience of an event professional. The survey is very much the first step in a journey. Now. Let me just take you into my imaginary world of what the future will look like. And it will be loads of people will complete the survey. We have a plan that over 500,000 people will receive access to the survey over the next 10 days. Um, now, I'm not imagining they'll all fill it in, but imagine they did. And then we would have this very rich data and we'd be able to create this acceleration action. Give that to the UNSTG. People, the, UN, the UN Sustainable Development Goal Action people and say, this is a way for you to meet the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. Now, there are, there are two ways the event industry can help reach the Sustainable Development Goals. First, by being more sustainable in our everyday actions, how we plan events. But secondly, by continuing to plan events because we're bringing people together and that is how people will innovate they'll collaborate and that's how we'll find new ideas and new ways to meet these sustainable development goals so we're really saying we're an important industry and you haven't really paid much attention to us so global governments the un they've paid attention to tourism but we're different and now we'd like some attention and we'd like to be able to partner with you and to get some resources and shift our industry so that we're considered to be more strategic and the work that we do is making a greater impact. So this is a step on a journey which I hope will end with every business in the world reporting on sustainability, including their event impact. With global governments looking at how much they spend on events and asking for that to be done in a sustainable way. With every event professional working in a way a process way which considers sustainability so yeah that's my future imaginary world <laughs> so and i go, go on i, I, I want to come back to lindsay's standards point but it's a, yeah. it might be a bit dry and boring so any questions <laughs> <laughs> any questions about this before i go on to the well, dry no, and i was, was going to say you know what are the opportunities and i think the standards is you know yeah is, Maybe, right for yeah. so it's very interesting because around 2012 a global standard was created for the event industry iso iso 2012-1 now iso standards are the known global standard framework for quality the average big business will have iso 9001 which is a standard for, for quality um iso 2012-1 was created just for the global event industry. And it's all about your way of working. So it is not a checklist. It doesn't say you must use uh, recycled paper or you must offset your carbon footprint. Instead, it asks you to gather your community and say, what are our sustainability issues? If you've got an event in South Africa, it's very different from an event in India very different from an event in London. So it's about understanding what your sustainability issues are event by event, and then creating objectives, plans, measuring, engaging your supply chain to address those issues. And I don't think the industry has fully realized the opportunity we have with 
an ISO standard because that is a way that um, will raise the profile of what we're doing because it lets us talk at the same level of, as all these other global businesses that have ISO standards. Interestingly, instead, what happened in our industry was all sorts of checklists started popping up or all sorts of like national approaches to standards started being created as well. And that's probably because we love a good checklist and probably because we are time poor as an industry. So that's something we need to shift away from, because if I gave you both a checklist for planning an event in Copenhagen tomorrow, it would be very different from an event that will be planned in New York or anywhere else in the world. So I think, you know, one of the things, at least from my perspective, um, about why we as event professionals need to get so involved is, you know, I was watching the Democratic debates last night. They talk about the Green New Deal and things like that here in the U.S., but I, I think when they talk about these doomsday numbers, right, like, you know, in 12 years or 16 years, you know, there's no going back. I think as an industry, we have the potential to disappear just from the fact that we can be replaced by online events. We don't have to be face-to-face, -face, at least from the perspective of a lot of people who maybe don't work in the industry. And I think we don't, we need to be part of the discussion because we don't want to get to the point where um, we're being regulated to where we're not allowed to meet face-to-face. -face, Absolutely. They, no, no, no. You have to meet online because if you don't, it's too much waste. It's, it's too much of a carbon footprint, things like that. Um, so if we're not part of the discussion now, it's going to be taken out of our hands. Absolutely. So the IPCC um, Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change, every year they issue a report around November. And last year, for the first time, one of their recommendations was use technology more and travel to meetings less so that's already a, a threat for our industry and it's a threat for the the connection of being face to face then just last week the bbc put out um a piece that was from uh, a few statements prince charles has said actually about the environment every year there is a climate change conference and i think in 2020 it looks like it's going to be in the uk and it looks like by 2020, all the global governments and businesses are going to need to be really clear on their plans for us to know that we can address climate change that we're facing. So for years, there's been this, we've got 12 years left, and now it's kind of come down to actually by that event in December 2020 in the UK, we have to be clear on what we're doing. So if you think about all of that, events are vital. We've got the potential challenge of people saying, look at the negative impacts of events, therefore we must stop. But then they're not understanding the positive impacts of events when people come together face to face. So as an industry, we really need to talk about that. For a long time, we've spoken about the economic impact of events. We have to go beyond that. So meetings means business. Economic conversation is great, but when will it start talking about the social impact as well and the hum human impact? Um, the iceberg is an initiative that's been gathering case studies on how global events make a difference to the world. And that is like a tiny dip in uh, of toe in the water. And also sport events are also looking and saying what the impact is when those events happen in different destinations. Um, yeah, so we need to speak up as an industry and we need to be planning our events in a way that we say, look, we've planned them to have a low negative impact, but also the whole connection of an event is creating a positive impact. It's a scale, right? The positive needs to outweigh the negative. And if we aren't working to prove that, then we're going to be told we can't do it. It's yes. an opportunity. Exactly. Also going back to the webinar I was talking about that I did for Global Meeting Industry Day with the children, uh, one, of, uh, one who was about 11, we asked about flying in the future. And we said, you know, imagine you were going to see all of your friends and you were all going to be talking about new ideas and it was going to be good. You'd get more money and new, new opportunities. And very straightforward, she said, but why would my job be more important than the planet? Why would I get on a plane to travel to an event? And I think we're definitely going to see more of that 
even myself and yes, okay, I swim in the sustainability world. So maybe this would happen to me before other event professionals, but I'm even feeling guilty now when I get on a plane and I'm thinking, okay, if I travel to this event, what will my impact be? And then when I attend the event, if there's a lot of plastic waste around me, I actually really feel that and feel uncomfortable with that. And right now, maybe it's just a few of us, but that is going to grow. Yeah. I think that you bring up an important point there. Cause I, I mean, I go to what feels like hundreds of events of a year and it's not a topic necessarily that I think, cause a lot of them are event centric, you know, it's not something that at a lot of the major association industry events I've been to lately, I, I think that it's there hovering on the edges, but tell us a little bit or help us understand what's that look like if I was to go to my local, I'm going to call you out, but you know that I'm not picking on you associations. So I'm going to go to my local PCMA or MPI, ASAE. I'm going to go to my local house and say, hey, I feel very passionate about this. How are we helping change the conversation yeah. and change the dial? What, what is that? Or is it something where we have to just place all of our hopes and dreams in this UN survey and the different nonprofits? No, I, I think you could go to your local chapter and you could have a, a chapter meeting where you work together and say, right, what are the sustainability issues for us to deal with in our geographical area and the types of events that we do? Um, we did a great piece of work with Site last year, which was called a Roadmap Toolkit. And that's accessible for free on the Positive Impact website. Anyone can use it. And it takes you step by step through understanding what your sustainability issues are and kind of creating a, a roadmap with objectives to address that. That is the best first start because you're getting input from different sources around what your sustainability issues are so you may really notice plastic in events and you may say we've got to have zero plastic events but then the person next to you may have recently broken their leg and said you know what our event venues in this town for accessibility are atrocious we've got to address that so it's important that we engage with people to understand what the issues are rather than just having someone tell you what you should be focused on um yeah does that address that Lindsay it does because I think that there are a lot of opportunities for event professionals out there but the most you know the most frequent place that we all meet face to face together as an industry tends to be our association events because when we're at our own events whether we're association planners or not we're, we're focused on different places. And so it doesn't really like going back to your time, poor example, it doesn't give our brain the space to absorb. We know what we're doing, but we cannot course correct because we are actively doing it in order to do it. And so we have to plant a seed to sit under the tree. And you could say, whose role is it to course correct us? So is it the role of the next generation in that they've just got to demand course correction because they're seeing the might have a choice. <laughs> yeah <laughs> is it our academics within the industry who are learning about the trends is it our associations who are providing education to so many of us or is it uh champions or i sometimes call the work we do like the canary in the coal mine do you say that in the u.s Yes. Okay, in the coal mine. Yeah. So that is sometimes I feel like, okay, the work that we're doing is canary in the coal mine. Like, okay, people, this is really happening. What more do you need to see um, before change happens? And the chirping of the canary isn't enough. So I'm hoping that this UN survey will give our industry a bit of an understanding that this is a way for us to create good connections to be playing at the higher strategic level for our industry to be speaking to the UN uh, departments and saying, let's work together. Let's have policy change, regulation. I mean, imagine if we had a policy so that every city around the world, you could donate food waste. Now we have all sorts of laws preventing that right now, but that's one of the things that we could achieve through this survey and more of a profile and conversations at a higher level, making changes. So then everyone would say, wow, the event industry is amazing because it donates this much food every year. And it really does take the advocacy conversation for like global meetings day. And it really, you know, I, I love that because it's, 
it's one of those things where we struggled for so long to be taken seriously as an economic impact just for the mm -hmm. cities. But that coupled with this is just one more leg to really strand. Absolutely. On. We want the United Nations to be saying the event industry is the most vital industry in the world. Only by people coming together at events will we achieve these sustainable development goals. And I, I, I feel like people must understand that, but then maybe they don't. Maybe, and maybe the next generation, again, who've grown up on technology, maybe they won't think that they need to be face-to-face. -face. And that, that's a true danger for the whole of humanity, uh, not to speak too broadly, but. <laughs> so I think, uh, no, go ahead. No, well, since you brought up, you know. That's where I was going. <laughs> doom and gloom, what is the worst case scenario if we just carry on as usual? Well, the worst case scenario, uh, so, so there's what all the clim climate scientists say about the worst case scenario, but let me paint the picture in terms of for our industry. The worst case scenario is an event is put under the spotlight for its negative impact. All the brands then think doing events is not good. So all of a sudden there is an economic crisis in our industry when people start pulling back on face-to-face -face and live events and start using virtual reality or investing things in apps and repurposing that budget that they would have spent. Um, and then our industry doesn't have a leg to stand on because we can't prove the positive impact that we have in a way that's the language of these businesses or governments. So the sustainable, develop yeah, the sustainable development goals is a language that we as an industry can learn so that we can say, hey, goal number two, and this is one of my favorite ones, so I always go to it, um, reducing food poverty. We can do something about that as an industry. In fact, we've got moving and we've got policy changes happening. And now every time an event happens, food is donated. And then that would stop this idea of, let's just stop all the face-to-face -face meetings. They have no, no positive impact in the world. So talk to me a little bit about what that means. You know, I think you brought up an interesting point around gender and the role inside of that, because it's it's a very big topic right now, I think, across the world. And, you know, the U.S. faces different concerns than, say, some of the uh, humanitarian concerns they're facing in, say, Asia. But I still think many of those still same tenets of gender equality, gender equity are there. How is that really tying together? Because when I think about sustainability, I'll admit that is not the first place my brain goes. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting to me that in many of the events I go to around female empowerment, it's never mentioned in the same breath. And I wonder what kind of impact it could have if we were more able to tie those together. Absolutely. I mean, sustainability really means the world working for everyone and for the future as well. But somewhere along the lines, we got it mixed up with being environmental. And in a way, I often think I can take some responsibilities for conversations around that because I always use environmental examples. But gender equality, I mean, that's my, the key thing I'm passionate about. And I, I believe if everyone has a favorite sustainable development goal that they say, you know what, if that one got solved, all the rest would flow easily. And I think if the gender equality one was addressed, then the rest would just fall into place. So the gender equality goal is all about women having an equal voice in the world, all around the world, no matter where they're located. Um, and there are, I mean, I could talk for hours about this. There are, <laughs> the, the idea of, of women being natural conveners and nurturers, the challenges of the event industry having so many men in positions of authority, yet being 80% uh, women workers in the industry. Um, I think as an industry, we sort of reflect the rest of the world in terms of how gender equality isn't working. And as an industry, we've got a responsibility and a very powerful way to readdress that inequality. And it's through the content that we put on stage at an event. So if you're putting a panel who are all going to have the same natural biases, the same life experience, they're going to communicate the same way and reinforce the same things. The power of an event is to bring different viewpoints. And that goes beyond just gender equality. It's different backgrounds, different religions, different ages. 
And it's bringing those people together and giving them a, a space where they can share and they can collaborate and they can contribute. That's how events are unique. You got goosebumps. I'm all goosebumpy over here. Yay. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's all we need to be saying to big businesses and to global governments. And we can't be that far away from them saying, yes, we should have way more events. The barrier we have is that we're not behaving in a responsible way. Mm -hmm. So at the moment they couldn't say, let's all double our event bed budgets, everyone, because that would be double the amount of plastic waste, double the amount of all male panels, double the amount of workers not being paid a fair wage. And those are the things that we have to address and we can address so that then we can grow our industry. So I think that that's a good segue into, you know, we've talked a lot about the big picture. How can I immediately take a hard look at my events and be that kind of strategist? Or if that's not my role, how can I change the conversation from a tactical well, perspective? Yeah, well, I think definitely by filling in the survey, it will give you some ideas and an understanding of the sustainable development goals shamelessly i would also plug and say become a positive impact ambassador because four times a year we send out a powerpoint and a little uh briefing sheet so even if you know nothing about sustainability you can follow the briefing sheet and the powerpoint you can gather your team together or your peers or colleagues or whatever and give them some insight into sustainability we've got 350 people around the world registered to do that right now and we need thousands upon millions more because the more that we're all talking about sustainability the more this change will happen and then i'll also kind of set everyone a challenge because this year the sustainable development goal summit is happening in new york 21st to the 24th of september and we are going to see businesses do major activations i was speaking today to a huge global sport and they're doing a big activation in new york around this and I really think our industry needs to do an activation. Um, around the similar time last year, so I think the 20th of September is World Peace Day, and Positive Impact did a number of webinars on the role of events to create peace in the world. And we've got some really interesting content on that. But this year, we need to up the game. We need an activation that is really saying, you know what, events are how we're going to solve global issues. And I don't know what activation is, but I'm ready to rally around it so the third call to action i would have after being an ambassador and filling the survey is bring your ideas for activation in september i think that's a good one just to remind those of you that are listening to us live or if you've been joining us on the podcast and are listening to us as you're heading to work on the train do make sure you send out a hashtag event icons and let us know what your thoughts are what could that look like or what are some small changes that you're doing inside your corporation, your association, your day-to-day -day events, and helping move this forward in a, in a sustainable thump, thump fashion. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I think, uh, I, you know, we want to hear the stories of, of what's, what's happening because we are such a large industry. It's, it's hard to know all the different things that happen. And, and I think sometimes we're afraid to pat ourselves on the back and give ourselves some kudos. Yeah. Um, I think, but if no one's going to, you know, if you're not going to be your own cheerleader, no one is. Yeah. Um, so there are people out there, there are event professionals who are doing this with their meetings. We just don't know about it. Like for like the Coca-Cola thing, I don't know if they're recycling the cups. I hope they are. Okay. Um, but like they should have had a huge sign up that said like, we recycle a million cups a year, you know, <laughs> whatever. Um, be your I own think you touch you touch on a few good things there, Alex. I think the storytelling is really important within an event in terms of what's happening. But also, I wonder if, as event professionals, we don't blow our own trumpet because we're worried we're getting it wrong. And yeah. some of the best storytelling I've seen has been people saying, I don't know if this is right, but I'm going to share it anyway. And I, I just want to give kudos to the support that we've had around the survey from Cvent, IMX, Maritz, and Oregon Convention Center, because they have all said, well, we're not perfect on this topic, but we know this is the topic of the future. So we want to be involved in the conversation. And I think if all the industry just 
got behind, okay, we, we want this to move forward rather than feeling like we need to be perfect before we get involved in it. No, I think that's a really good point, Fiona, that you bring up because I, you know, I oftentimes will be at events and someone's like, well, we did this, but you know, we're not doing enough. So it's not even being perfect. It's, they don't, they don't see, they see the value, but it's so small because the ocean is so big. Yeah. Um, we, a change. We had a, a, a funny incident with, um, not an incident, some feedback from one of the biggest uh, exhibition companies in the world. And we have an app um, which Monterey Convention and Visitors Bureau worked with us on. And this app is all about finding plastic at your events. And the exhibition company said, oh no, we don't want to use that because we've got lots of plastic at our events. And we were like, yeah, exactly. The app is to help understand where that plastic is so that we can then talk to the supply chain about removing it. But going back to right where we started the conversation about the hospitable nature of event professionals. We want everything to be perfect and lovely. And if we feel that people could criticize or see something isn't right, we don't want to draw their attention to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So is there a question we should have asked you around sustainability before we kind of get into our last kind of wrapping up? Cause we are getting up on time. Is there a question we should have asked you about this topic that we haven't? Um, I don't think so. I'm expecting a lot of, oh, here's one question I sometimes get from the industry. People say, oh, the United Nations, should we really care about their sustainability framework? So maybe that's a, a question to ask, like, should the average event professional really care about um, the UN SDG framework. And hopefully in our conversation, I've answered that because I've been saying, even if you don't care about the UN or any global governments, business is adopting this framework and we want more business from them. So that's probably the only question, but I think we've answered that. Well, I, I have a, a bit of a deeper dive into, you know, what about the, the detractors? So what about the people mm -hmm. who especially here in the U S right now, if, you know, fake news is a big thing. People aren't believing science. People aren't believing that global warming is a thing. You know, what, what do you say to the people who don't think there's a problem or what do you say, you know, cause then there's also the balancing act. You mentioned um, earlier a little bit about accessibility, you know, when the straw ban uh, was threatened here in the U S and, you know, Starbucks is taking away straws, things like that. Um, the accessibility community um, blew up rightfully so because um, there are people who need straws and um, so getting rid of them completely is is not an option for them um, and so you've got a balancing act there and then you've got people who just flat out don't believe that there's a problem um, you know what do you say to those people what if what if I in my organization or you know one of our listeners organizations you go to the CEO and say this is something that we should be focusing on and they go eh? I don't know. Mm -hmm. That it, plastic straw is so much cheaper than that metal straw. You're <laughs> out of your mind. It really is the hard business case. Now, granted, if you're going to look at the numbers today, metal straws are more expensive than plastic straws. But if you take a step back and look at the bigger business case and you look at the top companies in the world, the fact they're reporting on sustainability. So two years ago at the Davos summit, the CEO of BlackRock, who is the world's biggest investment company, wrote a letter to all the companies that they invested and said, we want your company to demonstrate positive social impact, not just economic return. Now, for me, the business case is really clear. Events are a way to demonstrate positive social impact. If we told that story, if we reported that way, so the clear business case is business leaders are asking for this. Your key clients or your ideal key clients are reporting on this. It is just around the corner. You can either tell them the scare tactics that the danger is if they ruin a client's brand, they'll never get another event with them. Or you can sell them on this is the future. You just need to look at stories like Tom Shoes, the success of, of that as a business and what that taps into. Um, 
And that's what's coming for our industry as well. And you know what? There's probably some people that are never going to get this. I have had people say to me, oh, Fiona, these young people, the minute they're in their job, they'll get on a plane because their business will tell them. Or, oh, Fiona, don't be doom and gloom about this. You're scaremongering people off. Um, and, and maybe those people won't ever get it. And maybe those people are the biggest threat to our industry because while they're in their positions of power, their staff below them and their strategy isn't changing to address sustainability. What about uh, influencers? I know influencer marketing is a really big thing right now. Um, what are you know the influencers in the industry doing? We talked about a bit, a bit about the associations, but what about the influencers who are getting up on stage and teaching and, and acting as an example for the industry? What about getting them involved? I think that is a great idea. Most of the people I speak to who are MCs or other people like that um, believe in this topic because they're interacting with a varied enough audience to know that this is a real passion for a significant percentage of people in the world right now. I think what's also interesting is influences outside of our industry. So we were chatting just before we started about Greta Thunberg, who's a 16-year-old Swedish student and since last October she's been protesting every Friday not going to school um, standing outside her parliament with a sign saying I'm protesting for climate change well in March 1.3 million young people joined her protests around the world um, she's about to get on a wind sail ship that will take her from Sweden to New York for the New York Sustainable Development Goals Summit um, and I think it's very interesting for us as event professionals to be watching her journey. Just today, I read a tweet from her, which was saying, this boat has no sponsors. Normally they do, but I've asked them to take all sponsor logos off because I do not want to be associated with that. And also I've read um, people saying, oh yeah, but the carbon footprint of building that boat and the carbon footprint of, you know, when she's actually in New York. And we have to realize that how influencers are treated outside of our industry is potentially how all of our industry will be treated. Emma Thompson, a, who's a British actress, came over for a protest. She flew from LA to London for an environmental protest. And that was all the media spoke about, the fact that she'd flown for that protest. So these influencers, they're getting critiqued for things a little too close to home for our industry, I think. I think that's interesting. Um because it's true like anyone anyone not against it e even if you're going to do something positive they will find something wrong and that is the only thing they will focus on yeah yeah and i you know i when i stand up and talk about a sustainable event industry i will often get someone saying but you flew to this event um and it's kind of on my wish list in the future to be gathering the airlines and saying come on what's the solution that you can innovate around i think they're going to become a bigger piece of our conversation we need them to help us yeah that's what i was just kind of sitting here thinking to myself because you know when you look at events we are part of a, a bigger ecosystem in many ways. I mean, when you think about event professionals, it's very easy to think of us as just the people who plan the events, but there's the properties we do the events at, the airlines that take us there, the travel companies they work with, it's all these concentric circles, you know, and it's, it's comforting in some ways to know that we are not alone in this and that if we go down, someone else will come down <laughs> with us. And so, you know, as people talk about, well, you flew to that event, you know, I think it's, it's so important to have those resources that help you no matter where you are inside the events or travel industry say, yes, but here's the balance. And let's talk about the shared responsibility we have, because I think that's yeah. again, not a conversation that's as frequently linked to sustainability in some ways, because it gets boiled down to this specific thing that we are failing yes. at and rather yeah. saying, here are the things we're succeeding at and together we're stronger just like when we meet face to face, we're stronger. And imagine again, that the, the findings from this survey might be that climate change is something that most of the industry is concerned about and right. um, wanting to measure that impact is something they're interested in. So then imagine if key leaders from the industry got together with one of the UN bodies, maybe UNFCCC yeah. and some of the airlines and said, look, we place this much airline business a year we know our industry is concerned about this. 
how can we move forward the innovations you're doing to give flying a lower carbon footprint? Yeah, I mean, Skift is doing some interesting stuff with that mm -hmm. in their global forums. And so that might yeah. be one to watch. I'm sorry, Alex, yeah. I interrupted you. No, 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 no. I, you know, we, we, we're on Zoom right now, right? Like, we are not all in the same place. We do not fly somewhere to record this episode, right? So what is technology's role in sustainability? And, and what would you say to the technologists who invent this kind of technology who are like, well, you don't need to fly all your speakers to your event. You can just broadcast them all on a screen. They don't need to yeah. be there. Like, yeah. at what point do you go, well, maybe that's too far <laughs> in the sustainability direction? Yeah, I, I, this is a real threat to our industry. I, personally, I would share stories of the number of people I've met in the queues for the toilets and the queues for coffee yeah. that has then created some collaboration in the future. Yes. And it, that just doesn't happen when you connect via Zoom. Um, but again, as an industry, we're not telling our story well enough in terms but of... Is there technology we're not using that we should be using to be more sustainable? Like what is innovation in technology's role? Oh, there is so <laughs> much that could happen. I mean, first of all, measuring. We're not measuring the impact of our events. Um, and then you could have systems in place around how many people are going to come, therefore how much food will we need, or uh, being able to measure the interactions that we've had together. Um, so one of the sustainable development goals is around peace. And for me personally, that comes from people meeting each other. That, you know, if you have a prejudice, again, I've, I've, I'll use my mom and dad as an example. They have quite a sheltered life and they've grew up and they've met mainly uh, through MPI and through the experiences they've had with me, different types of people. And every time they're like, wasn't that person really nice? And before they've had <laughs> no connection. I once had friends say to me, oh, your American friends are nice. I mean, not the rest of Americans, but your American <laughs> friends. And I said, have you ever met any other Americans apart from my friends? Well, no. So it's that face-to-face -face connection that enables people to break down barriers. And if we could measure that more and use technology to do so, wow, what a story we would have. Oh, so I hate this because we have three minutes left. So we're going to have to ask, you know, uh, what, what is the one tip you would share with the event planners or event professionals, um, if you could say anything? Start talking about sustainability. You don't need to know anything. Just start saying to your supply chain, can you do this in a more sustainable way? Start saying to your client, is sustainability important? And then obviously the tip is complete the survey because <laughs> that will give you some insight and it also is you lending your voice to a conversation on a globally strategic level, which obviously as an industry we want to be involved in. Great, and um, any resources? I know we're gonna be sharing the link uh, to the website and the blog. Um, any other things that um, people should be reading or looking into or filling out? I'm gonna be utterly fixated and say, do the survey, that is it. I mean, <laughs> so many people talk to me about, maybe I should learn this, maybe I should read that. And there are a trillion one reports out there. Um, but in reality, just do the survey and start talking about it. And there is no, that's the other thing I often say, there's no right or wrong around the sustainability conversation. And don't let anyone tell you there is. Explore, get curious and try something. Great. Are you going to be at IMAX Americas this year, Fiona? I am, yes. Yes. Fantastic. So make sure, listeners at home, that you can swing by and say hello to her and catch her in Vegas or one of the future shows. But yes. The other way, if not, Fiona, how do people get a hold of you? Oh, so um, the best I'm, I, <laughs> I don't even know my twitter address now I'm like mm, what is my <laughs> they can reach me through social media uh, that's probably the best way linkedin actually is a good way to connect with me and at imex i'm going to be leading a session on human rights and event planning and then talking about plastic at events and giving an update on this work from the survey so do check out the imex content 
Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Fiona. I know we could go on and on and on, and maybe we'll have to continue this at IMAX, and we'll have to get another 15 minutes in and update, um, because I know everyone's going to be excited to hear about that. Um, But for those watching and for those listening, uh, as you know, we record live each Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern at and uh, you can find us at www.event-icons.com. Uh, each episode is available the following Tuesday on all your favorite podcast apps. Um, but the best place to watch is live at event-icons.com. Uh, there you can see the show notes, links to all the resources shared, and join the chat right on the page. And once again, we always want to know what you think. So contact us uh, via social. Um, let us know what future topics you want to hear about, who you want to see on the show. Um, thank you for those who joined us live um, and for those who are listening. Uh, and thank you again to Fiona and uh, Lindsay you. for co-hosting. Um, this is such an important topic. Yes. Um, and I, I really hope that people um, take the time to really think about um, how they can make an impact. Um, so thanks again, everybody. And uh, that's it for this week's episode of Event Icons. Thank you for joining us for another amazing episode of Hashtag Event Icons. To catch all the bonus content, resources mentioned, and an invite to our Facebook and LinkedIn groups, head to www.event-icons.com. Also, let us know what you thought about this week's episode. Share your biggest takeaway. Just tag your post with Hashtag Event Icons. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you again for joining us. We'll see you next Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern, right here on Hashtag Event Icons. Cons.